Welcome to this introduction video on my Notion client portal designed for architects, designers, and small creative studios. Now, as a solo business owner, you'll know how difficult it can be managing multiple design projects and keeping track of all of the information on each. As a solo architect, I found that very difficult, and I've been trying to refine a system over the past 12 to 18 months that becomes a one-stop shop for the management of a project for its entire lifetime. This Notion client portal is a space that can be accessed by myself as designer and my client and manages things like my design process, brief, contract, billing dates, meeting dates, and extra information. Now this video covers version two of my client portal, which includes everything that was successful in version one, but also some really key refinements that I've learned over the past 12 months by using it in practice. One of the major improvements is that it's now optimized for use on the Notion mobile app. So you can take your Notion client portal to site visits and to client meetings and input data on the go. So let's open the portal template and show you how to implement it in your studio. So when you download my portal template and duplicate it to your Notion setup, you're going to open the portal hub first. Now this is a central location that stores a master template of the client portal and allows you to create individual project portals and oversee each of them from one space. Now you can see here that I have a series of projects loaded into my portal hub, which you won't see, but I'll show you how to create a new portal and edit the master template. Now in the portal hub, on the left hand side tab here, we have a resources section. Now this includes two templates that you can customize to your own brand colors and fonts to personalize the client portal you're offering. It has two video tutorials on YouTube, one for version one and this one you're watching now for version two with a drop down of all of the improvements made in version two. And it also has a series of important GDPR resources that you can read up on to ensure that your data is appropriately protected. So back to the portal hub, there are a series of drop down guides here in text form with some screenshots should you have any further queries. But let's talk about editing the master template. So what you need to do is edit the master template so that you're only making changes once rather than having to edit every single portal every time. So the very first thing you want to do is drop down to where the portals are created here. Look at this blue button on the right hand side that says new. You want to click the drop down arrow and you'll see the master template client portal v2 within that drop down. Click on the three dots to the right hand side and edit. Now this will open the master template within the portal hub. So open that in full screen and you can make your studio specific edits. So the way in which I've set up the client portal is there are a series of properties at the top that are visible to you only. So whether or not the client's been invited, whether or not the contract has been signed, a cover image, which is the thumbnail image that will appear in your portal hub and status. So you can confirm which project stage it's at. So once you're in the portal hub, you just have a snapshot of where each of your projects are. Below that, we are on the dashboard page. So there's a header to the dashboard, which just has some simple information about your studio and a welcome message. And it has the navigation to each of the individual pages within the portal. Below that includes a very important section, which is the Our Journey section. Now this is mapped on to the RIBA work stages and the process that I undertake, but you can edit that to suit your own process. Each of the work stages has a series of dropdowns beneath it. So the first one is what I've called a document vault. So the vault includes the key documents associated with each work stage and allows you to upload them and store them beneath. Then it has a key milestone section, which confirms each milestone that I expect to be completed at each work stage, whether it's in progress or whether it's been complete. Now you can edit these or add a new milestone below uh, as you wish. And importantly, these milestones are linked to the section below, which is the program and deliverable section. So you'll see here that I have three deliverables associated with stage two. They're all complete and the target completion date is highlighted here. And you can also tag who is responsible for completing each item. So whether that's yourself or your client. Now, if you were to just add in another milestone here, so let's say we'll add in an example milestone, then that will automatically populate at the top. So these two things speak to one another. So let's go back up to the navigation and move on to the individual pages. 
So the first page is the introduction page. Now this page should be edited once and not really change a huge deal because what it's trying to do is set out your design process and explain it to the client so they know what to expect. Now under the design process section, I've included the three phases that I usually undertake with clients. And if you click the drop down, you'll have each of the individual work stages that all have text within them to explain to the client what to expect and the key deliverables associated with those work stages. At the bottom here, we also have a link to the RIBA plan of work, but that can easily be changed to the AIA work phases or whatever you're operating on. Below that is communication. Now this sets out some standard patterns of communication that you want to establish with your client. So the working hours, your response time, how to schedule calls and meetings, and it just includes some key contact information and what platform you use for virtual meetings and where the physical meetings may be held. And below that, there's some frequently asked questions, which tends to answer some of the client's key questions at the start of a project. So moving on, the next page is brief. This is an addition from version one and has proven useful in my own practice. So what this includes is a brief questionnaire, which I use in client briefing workshops to discuss and develop their project brief. So I have a series of key themes, space, function, aspiration, an opportunity for them to upload their Pinterest board and questions on budget. And each of these drop downs are already populated with a series of questions I like to ask my clients. Now you can fill that in with your clients doing a briefing workshop, which is what I'd recommend, or you can leave it to your clients to fill it in in their own time and review it together afterwards. Now below that, there's a program and budget worksheet. Now this is really just a high level assessment of the costs that is useful at the beginning of a project. So let's say we think that an extension is going to be two and a half thousand pound per square meter, and we're looking like a 30 square meter extension. And you can input that into this table and it'll come out at 75,000 excluding that. And you can add in different figures for minor refurbishment or extensive refurbishment or lump sum costs for a kitchen, for instance. And start to shape up a bit of a project budget at the beginning that can start to impact the early conversations. Below that, there's a resources section, so an opportunity for the client to upload existing site and property information like red line boundaries and measured building surveys. And finally, a section where you might upload your final project brief once it's developed. So back up to the navigation, let's move on to the contract page. This is a very simple page for the purpose of agreeing the contract and storing it in one central location. So there's some details on the responsible person on the project and also the draft and assigned contract can be stored on the right hand side. The next page is the billing page and I find a very useful one. So it has a drawdown schedule, which I like to establish at the beginning of the project, where I identify each work stage and the invoices associated with each work stage, and then set out whether or not they've been paid or if they're awaiting payment or not yet issued, and the dates in which I intend to issue them. You can also upload the invoice PDF should you want to on the right hand side here. So this at the beginning of a project just sets out to the client exactly what they're expected to pay. And from my experience gives my client some certainty on what on what's to come. Below that, there's some simple invoice details and payment method details. The next page is a project directory, which is an addition again for this version two. Uh, it's just useful to identify each of the key people on the project. So whether that's the architect, the principal designer, the structural engineer as part of the design team, or whether it's the contractor or some of the statutory officers associated with the project. So this just gives myself and my client a snapshot of all of the key people on the project and how to contact them. The next page is the meetings page. And from this page, you can track all of your project meetings. So you can create meetings associated with each work stage, the date and the time, whether or not that's been complete or is scheduled, who is expected to attend that meeting. And if it's a virtual meeting, you can add in the link, like the Zoom link, for instance, or if it's a physical meeting, you just identify that that's in your studio or on site. Below that, there are some pre-created agenda templates that you can click on and populate. And you can fill these in on the go or uh, before a client meeting and they'll store in the agenda section. And likewise with meeting minutes, you might open one of these templates and fill it in when you're on site with a client or during a meeting, and then they will automatically populate and store beneath for the duration of the project. The final page is a feedback page, and this is purely for the purpose of reminding me that I am quite poor at requesting uh, feedback at the end of project. 
So with a small studio, any feedback and positive testimonial is greatly appreciated. And this offers two opportunities for collecting that. You can paste your Google review link in this location here, or there's a pre-made feedback form that I've completed that can capture some testimonials and some information on how well you've delivered your service. So that summarizes the structure of the client portal. Now you want to go through and edit the master template to however you operate your studio. And once you've done that once, when you create a new portal, it will use the template as a basis for that. So let's go back to the portal hub and I'll show you how to create a new portal. So let's say you've just edited that template and now you want to create a new portal. You can either click the new section here or this blue button. And that's going to create automatically a new client portal from the template. Now this will take a few minutes because there's a lot of data and information in the template. So be patient. So once you've loaded that in, it'll populate in your portal hub. Now you can drop into that individual portal and personalize it to the project. So I'd recommend changing it from client portal V2 to, let's say the project specific name is Chestnut House Portal. That will create a project specific title. And then you can go through and change some of the key milestones or change what you think is relevant to the project, like the target completion dates and so on. And once you've done that, you'll then have a system that can be in operation for the entirety of the project and can be shared with your client. So let's go back to the portal hub and I'll show you how to share this with the client. Now, this is very important to note. You do not want to share the portal hub with your clients. That will give your clients access to all of the other project portals and is not protecting your data appropriately. So it's important that you only share the individual portals. So let's say I want to share the Chestnut House portal with the Chestnut House client. Click on the portal, go up to the top right corner when you're in that specific portal and click share. Enter your client's email address and invite them. And I'd recommend doing it on a can comment permissions rather than a can edit permissions so they don't break or edit any of the template. So once you invited them, they'll just need to download the Notion app on mobile or desktop, and then they can access the portal for free for the entire project lifetime. So I really hope this saves you time and elevates your workflows. I'm totally open to feedback and queries, so please let me know if you have any. Thank you very much.